There are four things that, generally speaking, will determine the outcome or, or your, your outcome in a deadly force situation in, in a gunfight. Now, these four things are generally described as Ayub's priorities because they were developed, not surprisingly, by Masad Ayub, who's a pretty deep thinker about these kinds of things. The priorities to be concerned with in order to survive a bad situation, the kind we're training for, are number one, number one, awareness. Now, this is a pretty high level thing. This has got nothing to do with guns or gear or running around and you know, running and gunning. Simple awareness, the mental skill of keeping track of what's going on around you every day is the thing that's going to most often save your butt. And this is the, the skill that we see most people lacking if we just observe people in our general environment 24 hours a day. Most people go around in a state of complete unawareness. Now sometimes you have to be completely unaware. Sometimes if you're reading a book or you're concentrating on your work on your computer or uh, something like that, you, you have, you, you, of course you're absorbed in that. But let's look at driving for an example. We see people driving who are completely unaware of their environment and you know, they've just got their blinders on and just focused straight ahead and they aren't seeing anything except what's in front of their car and these people aren't seeing what's going on to the side of them, they aren't seeing dangers, they aren't seeing uh, potentially uh, bad or interesting things going on uh, as they drive by and that's not a good way to be. We all learned in driver ed school we want to be constantly scanning. You know, the, the two side mirrors and the rear view mirror are constantly scanning, keeping our awareness open so we can see accidents developing. Same, same deal with physical violence. You've got to keep your head around you. More on this in a later segment. But point is awareness. Awareness. Not guns, not gear, nothing like that is the number one priority. The second priority, should the bad, things ha bad thing happen, are the tactics you choose to use. Again, we're not talking about what gun you have, nothing like that. The tactics you choose to use. Do you choose to engage or to retreat? If you choose to engage, do you choose to do so with the use of cover or with certain verbal skills? I mean, any number of tactics do you choose to? If you're in a dark environment, you know, how do you use your light, etc., uh, etc. Et but the choice of tactics is the second most important thing. Should the bad thing happen despite your awareness or your awareness fail you and you find yourself in a bad situation? The third thing that Massad identified is your skill. Again, we aren't talking about guns, okay? We aren't talking about any hardware here. You know, these, these, are, this is, these are all software components. But the third component, once you get involved in a situation, is what level of skill do you have? This level of skill includes what level of stress inoculation do you have? Not just what can you do on a bright sunny day under no stress on the range, but what holds up under the kind of stress that develops as these situations develop. So skill is the third priority. And last and finally, and at the very bottom of the heap, is your equipment. What gun do you have? What holster do you have? You know, what all the neat things do you have hanging off your gun? That's the least important. And what's interesting is this is where we spend all of our time. This is where all the all the uh, promotional material, this is all the videos, this is all the magazines talk about. Uh, it's what we like to talk about when we go out. Um, it's what a lot of people focus on when they think they're talking about training for a bad encounter, is they talk about, oh, what kind of gun do you have? What kind of equipment do you have? You hung off it. That's not important. That is really pretty unimportant compared to all the rest of these things. Basically, if you have a, a non-defective gun from a major manufacturer, that's box stock, you will do okay. Of course, you can improve on that a little bit, but that's the least of your worries. It's spending time focusing on awareness, tactics, and skills that's going to pay much greater dividends than buying a neat new gun.